John, I'm fascinated by the cosmology, fundamentals of physics, brain, mind, all these exciting subjects. But uh, when, when I step back from it uh, 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 on occasion, I'm wondering, how, how do I know these things? Which, of course, is the big uh, uh, f uh, uh, subfield of epistemology and philosophy. Uh, from your perspective as a historian of science and watching this, the whole scientific project develop over several hundred years with, with some very deep uh, foc focal uh, points in, in your work, uh, what, what can you, how can you comment about the expanding scope of, 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 the, of, of humanity, human beings, to understand stuff? Ah, well, of course, the, the key word is in the question, <laughs> is understand. We certainly have uh, gained fantastic control over electrons. And uh, we are able to do things that, uh, let us say, Francis Bacon, who uh, promoted the notion that science should be of some use to mankind, could never have dreamt of. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, if control uh, indicates we're on the right track, if control is a stand-in for truth, uh, we're doing very well indeed. Uh, also, our science gets more and more mathematical, especially the physical sciences, and now, of course, the biological sciences. And uh, we tend to think that if you can calculate and you measure what corresponds to your calculation, then that's another very good indication of truth. And the more decimal points you can <laughs> compute and the more decimal points to which you can measure, uh, everything uh, uh, points to uh, uh, a science in the right direction. Though there are very good examples uh, where in the agreement has been to four or five, even six or seven decimals, and it's turned out that the theory is wrong. So it's not infallible, uh, but uh, nonetheless, that is another indicator uh, of uh, an approach to it truth. So, so you have this progression um, and the epistemology question is, you know, how, how do we know what we know hmm. uh, in, in a broad sense? But in science, you have this progression. So in, in a given uh, area, you have, in terms of measurements, more and more decimal points, such as with atomic clocks hmm. and measurements in terms hmm. of the accuracy of, of time, you have this enormous uh, progression. It seems astonishing. Yeah, I don't know how many decimal points out. 20, I mean, it's a huge number, I mean, in terms of the ticking of various atoms at, uh, you know, billion cycles a second or whatever. And, and so uh, how do the two articulate in terms of our human capacity to, to know and yet the, and the expanding um, um, scope of science to deliver more and more accurate results? I think, um, <clears throat> though I'm not a philosopher, I can uh, maybe take some refuge in William James, who I think said there really is no such thing as truth, big T truth. There's just a whole lot of little truths. Mm -hmm. And uh, we extrapolate from their existence to the notion of a big truth, which is an illusion. Uh, so I say, yeah, there are a lot of these little truths, the truths of control, the truths of technology that allows us to go flying around the world on planes that uh, only fall down with pilot errors, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, we have the truths of uh, calculation and agreement. Does that mean that the theories, the models on which we base those calculations are big T true? Uh, and uh, if so, how would you know? Uh, so epistemology is a fascinating subject, but I don't know that its study gets us anywhere because the scientists keep progressing by controlling and by calculating and don't seem to be very much worried about uh, anything uh, deeper yeah, and, qua scientists. And, yeah. and we don't want them to worry about anything mm -hmm. deeper. We want them continuing to, to improve and to do their calculations and, mm -hmm. and, and to improve the, the nature of the world. That's fine. But if we step back and, and, and look at this big project of humanity and what we know and how we understand things, then it's an, it's an important da data, it's maybe the most important data, to understand you know, what we know. And uh, the fact that it's progressing in depth, uh, uh, and, and multiplying the small t truths, uh, do at some point those small t truths aggregate into at least a medium size. Maybe. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> uh, 
Uh, you, you know, it's 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 a hard it's a hard call, but. Uh, I, I think that um, the more that you know, the more you have confidence in, in a very realistic approach to science and and uh, and, and and approach to the uh, the nature of the world, and then you try to construct some reason why that there, even if there's no reason, you you need to think about whether the, whether uh, no reason is the ultimate reason or there's something beyond that. And I think that's fine. Does it uh, bother you that? Uh the truths have changed over time. The uh, truths about the same sort of uh, I, I subject love, matter. I love that. When right. when when conventional wisdom is is uh, forced to change, I think that's uh, some of the most beautiful experiences in in, in, in human endeavor. Right, but does that imply that uh, these changers are asymptotically approaching some truth? Or does it just mean that we have a better model for better control and better calculation? Uh, I, I think the uh, the latter is definite, and I think it doesn't exclude the former. I would hope that we are asymptoting approach to that truth, but I think asymptote is the right metaphor because you'll never reach it. <laughs> <laughs> Quite. 